welcome to Daily Prayer, a ministry of the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We'll be here with you every day throughout the COVID-19 emergency. I'm Pastor Bob Schaefer. It's good to see you. Today is Friday, July 31st, the Friday before Proper 13. Let's take a moment of silence now as we begin. We begin with a lighted candle. A candle burning in the darkness is a powerful symbol of hope. We light this candle as a sign of our strong hope that God is with us no matter what comes. The candle also reminds us that Jesus said we would be lights for the world. We're called to live generously and graciously, taking care of one another in the name of Jesus. Please join me if you'd like in lighting a candle in your own home now. Let's pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we turn to the words of Holy Scripture. Today, our readings begin with Psalm 145. The Lord is merciful and compassionate. He is patient and demonstrates great loyal love. The Lord is good to all and has compassion on all he has made. The Lord supports all who fall and lifts up all who are bent over. Everything looks to you in anticipation, and you provide them with food on a regular basis. You open your hand and fill every living thing with the food they desire. The Lord is just in all his actions and exhibits love in all he does. The Lord is near all who cry out to him, all who cry out sincerely. He satisfies the desire of his loyal followers. He hears their cry for help and delivers them. The Lord protects those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth will praise the Lord. Let all who live praise his holy name forever. We continue in the prophet Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Wake up, wake up, get up, O Jerusalem. You drank from the cup the Lord passed to you, which was full of his anger. You drained dry the goblet full of intoxicating wine. There was no one to lead her among all the children she bore. There was no one to take her by the hand among all the children she raised. These double disasters confronted you, but who feels sorry for you? destruction and devastation, famine and sword. But who consoles you? Your children faint. They lie at the head of every street like an antelope in a snare. They are left in a stupor by the Lord's anger, by the battle cry of your God. So listen to this oppressed one who is drunk, but not from wine. This is what your sovereign master, the Lord your God says. Look. I have removed from your hand the cup of intoxicating wine, the goblet full of my anger. You will no longer have to drink it. I will put it into the hand of your tormentors, who said to you, lie down so we can walk over you. You made your back like the ground and like the street for those who walked over you. Finally, a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, the ninth chapter. It is not as though the word of God had failed, for not all those who are descended from Israel are truly Israel, nor are all the children Abraham's true descendants. Rather, through Isaac will your descendants be counted. This means it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, rather the children of promise who are counted as descendants. For this is what the promise declared, 
About a year from now, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but when Rebecca had conceived children by one man, our ancestor Isaac, even before they were born, or had done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose in election would stand, not by works, but by his calling, it was said to her, the older will serve the younger. Just as, as, it, as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now that we've dwelt in God's word, let's take some time to pray together. I'd like to invite you to pray out loud with me. Please don't be embarrassed that you're praying with a video screen right now. I'm praying in an empty room. And yet, despite the strangeness, our technology is joining us right now, no matter when and where we are. So, in that spirit, let's pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving health again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Almighty and merciful God, you are the only source of health and healing. You alone can bring calmness and peace. Grant to all of our neighbors who are ill an awareness of your presence and a strong confidence in you. In their pain, weariness, and anxiety, surround them with your care. Protect them by your loving might and grant to them once again the gifts of health and strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of earth and air, water and fire, height and depth, we pray for those who work in danger, who rush in to bring hope and help and comfort when others flee to safety, whose mission is to seek and save, serve and protect, and whose presence embodies the protection of Jesus the Good Shepherd. Give them caution and concern for one another, so that in safety they may do what must be done under your watchful eye. Support them in their courage and dedication that they may continue to save lives, ease pain, and mend the torn fabric of lives and social order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, Support and strengthen all those who reach out in love, concern, and prayer for the sick and distressed. In their acts of compassion, may they know that they are your instruments. 
in their concerns and fears, may they know your peace. In their faithful serving, may they know your steadfast love. May they not grow weary or faint-hearted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, in the stillness of our souls, we listen for your voice to know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you are near us, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. Then take us by the hand into each day that lies ahead. For where you lead, we can confidently go with Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. Each day, I like to share with you one good thing, a bit of hopeful news, a moment of beauty, a tip to help you through the day. Maybe you, like me, have spent more time than usual sitting and working at hard, uncomfortable chairs that really just weren't made to be used for hours on end. Maybe your posture is suffering. Maybe your posterior is feeling a little sore. So may I make a recommendation to you? Several weeks ago, I purchased a purple brand cushion to use in my home sound booth and in my workstation. I'm using wooden kitchen chairs in both places and they just weren't very comfortable for long. The purple cushion really makes a difference. I got the smaller, thinner one and it's still big enough and thick enough to support big, thick old me in comfort. I think you'll like it too. Consider it a small investment in your happiness this very strange summer. And that's one good thing for today. Do you have a good thing that you'd like to share with the world? Send us your photos and videos by going to bit.ly slash mygoodthing and share your tips and stories with at Pastor Schaefer on Twitter. I can't wait to hear from you. And that will do it for now. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with us. We hope it's been a blessing. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tell your friends about us. Stop by and visit us online at goodshepherdlife.org, and please consider making a gift to support our ongoing ministry. You'll find our PayPal address in the program notes. Stay well, be of good cheer, and be kind to one another. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>